Hi there, thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Michelle and today we're going to be talking about growing up as a fat kid. I recently made a post about um, you should, I was talking about how you should feel worthy um, no matter what size your body is in. And I got a bit of interesting comments. Okay, one of them was someone giving me unsolicited advice of how I should lose weight. And the other one was someone talking about how um, you shouldn't glorify obesity and being a uh, plus size comes with a lot of um, health problems. And I was just racking my brain. I'm like, don't you think that's a bit unnecessary and uncalled for? Because do you feel like because someone is bigger, they shouldn't feel worthy of just existing and being loved and having good things in life simply because they are in a bigger body does that sound right because to me it's, it doesn't sound right um yeah but as i talk about my experiences growing up as a fat kid i'm gonna be doing my eyebrows my eyeshadow and a bit of gloss i'm trying to learn how to do my makeup so why why not and why not now plus i'm gonna take some pictures after this so i'm just trying to like do a small small look with the minimal products that I have um, yeah so I, I really haven't been investing in makeup and I don't really know how to do my makeup but we all start from somewhere so this is me starting from here uh, yeah so one of the interesting things about uh, growing up fat is that there's this moment of realization like you could have just been there in your jolly kid self and then it hits you that wait a minute i'm actually different or rather i look different or you know uh, someone just gives you that realization and you're like from then on you can't unsee it uh so for me i don't really remember a specific experience that made me realize that i'm big but i know that it was Probably when I was in, I would say maybe class one, class two there. That's grade one, grade two. And I think it was a relative, or it, I think it was an adult. And you know, like when you get so many comments from adults, they're like, eh, umenona, eh, kwenye unakula nini, eh, siju what, like, yeah. So those comments, like, there were so many i was getting so many of those comments and it took a bit of time for me to just get that in my head that i was bigger and i was a little bit different and even in the games we used to play as kids um I, <laughs> comment down below if you've ever played chamama and chababa it's basically just a a, a kid a, a kid game or rather a game kids play uh basically playing house and there's usually like the mom the dad um sometimes children and whatever other character you want in the game so for me i just remember like being that small i was usually just the the charmer mom aka the mom because i mean when it's a bigger person even if i've seen this even in acting roles or maybe now it's in, it's changed but growing up even in acting roles the mom was always the bigger person in the room yeah so anyway yeah i had my realization and i think from then on it was just me navigating life knowing that consciously knowing that i look different and most especially i look different from most of my friends i have a bit of my notes on my mirror so i'm just looking at points that I want to talk about so that I don't forget anything. So one of my notable experiences was comments from adults. I feel like if you've grown up as a fat kid, or maybe if you've grown up with like a, a quality that people kept talking over and over about, you know this, it usually comes from adults. Like you're gonna meet an adult and they're gonna tell you how, oh, you've gotten so big. Uh, from the last time I saw you, oh, you, you are doing this, oh, you're looking like that, you're looking like this. Why? Why are you projecting your insecurities onto me? And it's not uh, about 
um, how someone can just see a statement and it's just a statement, you can literally feel the emotions behind that statement. And even the looks they're giving you as they're telling you that, it's like, you've gotten so big. Kwani, what are you eating? Like, it's, it's a judgmental look, you know? Like, you can't explain it or you can't um, gaslight yourself into thinking it's a positive comment. And the more you get them, the more you just realize how um, maybe different you look and the more it just hits home for you and you start being so cautious about your body because as a kid um you hold on to things adults tell you so dearly and because your world is so small whatever you get from the adults around you you hold on to that for dear life you know and you 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 look at that as like the holy grail whatever they say so they could be coming with their negative notions and you're gonna still hold on to them and and think that they're beneficial to you if it's maybe like insecurities they're projecting they're gonna project and they're gonna speak because you don't know any better and you don't know like you haven't learned yet how to work on yourself and how to pick and choose what you borrow from people when you're a child you don't know any better you know so i really wish that's something that people can stop if you're an adult and you're interacting with a child stop telling them about how their body looks and how they've added weight or how they've, they've lost weight or all of that stop it especially when you're telling them in in such a condescending or rather such a judge judgmental tone like just remember you have the potential to affect that kid's self-esteem um anyway so yeah, I used to get a lot a lot of comments from adults around me. And now there's also <clears throat> there's also men who feel like they can tell you any sort of things just because they're older and just because you're in a bigger body. And those 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 are creepy men. I'm saying men because for me personally, those kind of comments usually came from men. And now I think I was I was at Maybe a, a bit older, not older really, because I was still in primary school, and that was around grade six, grade six to grade seven. And I remember there was this one guy from where I lived, and every time he saw me, he would just be like, "Oh, unaka mrembo, oh, oh, siju unaka vizuri, siju kujani kununulia what, 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 what?" Like, no, no thanks. Um, I, I don't even why am I even sugarcoating it? That's a pedophile, honestly. How are you complimenting guys? And I've just told you what he used to say in like lightly because he used to say some really graphic things. And I remember I would just see this person from a mile away and literally just find any way to just hide from the person or change route because they used to make me so uncomfortable, you know. And that wasn't actually the first person who did that. It was quite a number of older men who felt the need to tell me how beautiful my body was and how uh, nice I look um, and how I'm so mature because I'm so, you know, like when you're, I don't know why people assume that just because you're in a bigger body, it means that you're more mature, even though you're a child. There's no such thing as a mature child honestly and also there's no such thing as women mature faster than men anyway that's a conversation for another day um oh i feel like i'm getting so distracted <laughs> bear with me guys this is the first time i'm doing like something as i talk so i'm not used to this uh but we will get there there's this thing i did for years and my body has actually suffered from it it's i used to wear um, what are they called? Like slimming belts? Uh, I remember I, I started wearing them when I was still in primary school. And I would wear like slimming belts and like two bikers, sometimes three biker shorts. And I'm just there compressing my body because I'm like, oh, I need to look slimmer. I need my, my tummy to look like it's smashed. I need to, oh gosh, guys. Let me tell you, I still have marks to this day because of that, that thing that I used to do. And it's so funny how I'm not I'm not coming for anyone who wears like 
slimming clothes and um what are they called um is it spandex i'm not sure guys because i i do wear those sometimes especially when i'm wearing dresses and especially when it's like short bodycon dresses and i'm not coming to, uh for anyone who does that but i don't feel like it's right to expose a child to that sort of thing or rather to normalize it because for me no one exposed that to me like my parent uh didn't expose that to me it was by my own ilikuwa kwa bidii yangu to find these things and you know to just use them to look slimmer and i just remember having to suck in my stomach so much <sighs> wow i'm so glad those days are over anyway guys so i'm gonna be lining it a little bit oh, i'm so scared because I, i don't want to mess it up but anyway, if we mess it up we clean it and we move on um yeah so um, um it's okay if you prefer to wear like slimming clothes that's your body your choice um but don't feel comfortable like advocating that to a child hell no just let them be let them exist you know when they become an adult and they feel like they want to do these things they want to like um oh guys sorry before you misquote me i'm not saying that if your child is like um having health problems because due to obesity i'm not saying that you should just sit down and look at them and be like i'm gonna wait till you're an adult so that we can take your health seriously no that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying that there's certain things in diet culture um is there something like slimming culture i don't think so but there's certain things in diet culture that i don't feel like a child should be exposed to or other things that should be normalized to a child until they're of age and they can make their own decisions yeah um oh gosh i hope this doesn't look funny i'm trying to get a straight line oh my god let me use my smaller mirror another thing is people assuming you are way older than your actual age and i mean i don't i don't really it's not really like a big problem because for me personally I've never been ashamed of saying my age uh, of which I'm 27 right now but I've never been like that person to hide how old I am or you know I think it's just a problem when it's used to exclude you from things or from opportunities and also when it's used to when it's used by predators especially like you know the the example I've given of like older men just because they assume you're older and they think they can get away with it you know you find yourself in very uncomfortable positions you know and even like even from women i remember there's a time we went for my aunt was having a, gra- a graduation party for her son so we went and that day i was wearing a dress but the guys do you know that i didn't use to wear dresses until i was like i i think like 2 years ago like i actively started wearing dresses not just once in a while because i i didn't used to like the way my body looked oh my goodness anyway guys <laughs> maybe that's going to be a story time but yeah so we went to the graduation party and then i remember i was wearing a dress it was so long and to me it was so cute i still think it was so cute and you know i i am a, a big person so the dress was really feeling all the places it needed to feel you know <laughs> if you know you know uh anyway so it was a really like long dress and yeah you could you could see everything and i don't mean that in a sexual way i just mean that it was a bodycon so like you could see my calves you could also see my back rolls and my tummy and that's what i mean by everything so i remember like after our we were done um another lady approached my mom because i went with my mom and they asked them oh gosh your kid is so big ameolewa that's asking if i'm married and guys at the time i think i was 
How old was I? I mean, I was not a minor, but I was so young. The assumption from this lady came from just by the fact that I was bigger. That's the only reason they were asking me. I am now married. So my mom was like, no, she's not married. No, not yet. She's still in school. Me, 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 me. And she was like, oh my gosh, she's so big. And I remember when my mom told me that, I was just like, you know what? It's just another day, man. Just another day. A different day, same shit. You know? Because that, actually, that's not the first time I've experienced uh, such... <laughs> I don't want to be rude, but I feel like that's backward thinking. And I remember there's a time I was in driving school. At that point, I was 23. I was in driving school, and I was, yet again, the biggest person in the room. And when we were doing, like, uh, one course with the instructor, I remember him. Because there's, there's one car that was really tiny. If you've gone to... Uh, Kibit as a driving school it's I think it's government owned or something so the cars are really old and one of them was a blue car it was so small it was so tiny my goodness it felt like do you know have, if you've ever seen a tuk-tuk which is like a third uh, wheel car if you've ever seen a tuk-tuk it was much lower than a tuk-tuk so you had to like get in and squeeze yourself and just drive like this Anyway, so as I got out, um, we were doing that test whereby like they place, um, what are they called? Is it traffic cones? They place them on a straight line and you have to like go zigzag and zigzag and zigzag. So I remember when I came out of the car, I was really sweaty because I've been taking turns and doing all this. And mind you, that was my first time, like, or rather my first times driving or learning how to drive and it was a lot guys it was a lot you had to turn the car and remember it was a manual car so you have to do a lot anyway so when i got out i was sweaty and everything and i went to stand where, where uh, they were all standing as they watch whoever was next or whoever's turn it is and i remember this instructor being like what aki ume sweat you need to to akwendesha gari i'm like yeah, like, as if that wasn't enough, the instructor told me, Unafa upunguze is all contraceptives. Like, first of all, where do you even get the audacity to talk to someone like that? It's one thing for you to assume your, your own things in your head, but you're feeling so comfortable to voice it. First, why are you assuming that just because I am big, it automatically means I am on contraceptives. That's so stupid. Anyway, yeah. So I feel like a lot of people feel so entitled to just say whatever they want to say and just give you like some unsolicited advice. And you're just left there wondering like, what is it about me that made you feel so comfortable to just talk to me anyhow, you know? But at the end of the day, it's actually not about you. Guys, I don't know if I should be doing this on my under eyes, but let's let's see. <laughs> let's do it and see how it turns out. Yeah. So it's not about you. It's actually not about you. Like you could be the sweetest person ever, you could be the rudest person ever, but people will always feel the need to tell you their opinions, even though they are unsolicited and even though some of them are just ignorant as hell. So um, that was one of my other experiences of people feeling like they can talk to me anyhow or they can tell me their thoughts please guys just sometimes just keep it to yourself you know especially if, if, if it's not gonna be beneficial to anyone just keep it to yourself and also you don't have to voice opinions especially on a subject you know nothing about it's okay it's okay to not to not give your opinions on every single thing out here. Imagine it's okay. Especially on something that you haven't experienced as well. Like, there's no way you're going to come to me talking to me about um, your expertise on weight loss when you've never struggled with weight in your life. Why? Why? And there's also no way... Oh, ouch. Something got in my eye. 
um yeah and there's no also no way you're just gonna come to me and tell me what you think i should do or tell me uh things that you assume i'm doing when you don't know me literally you don't even know my second name why do you feel so comfortable anyway yeah so those are just some of the comments and are the bros looking okay i think they are right I think they are. Hmm. Should I? Should is this one a bit shorter? Let me see. <laughs> this looks so funny, but this is what I do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guys, I think they're the same height. Mm, yeah, something else that I've experienced is dieting and dieting culture Whew, guys oh my gosh i'm not saying dieting is bad it's actually a good thing but i feel like for me the number of times i did diets it was coming from a place of desperation of wanting to just lose weight and being willing to do anything literally anything even if it's it was detrimental to my health to just be able to say that i've lost weight and to see that Right now, I, I do try to diet, uh, and dieting, what dieting for me looks like right now is um, having controlling my portion sizes and also trying to eat healthy. Uh, and by healthy, I mean like, I'll try to cook healthy meals at home. Kama ni ugali, skuma, na mboga, ama matoke, na nyama, na mboga. Like, I try to make sure I eat a lot of greens and a lot of vegetables. And yeah what it looks different from when i was growing up because there's moments in time i just i would dive into some crazy 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 diets and i would feel so bad during and after you know because you're just doing it to lose weight you're not doing it as a lifestyle you know and most of them were really not sustainable they were not <laughs> they were really not and something else that i grew up experiencing and i still experience up to now is people called chubby chasers <sighs> guys <laughs> there's people who assume that just because you're in a bigger body it automatically means that you can't reject them especially when they are um what is deemed as good looking by society if someone approaches you and they feel like they they are good looking by societal standards they just assume automatically that you're gonna say yes to them because you are desperate oh my god uh, such people when they approach someone who is a plus size person they think that a plus size person is desperate and they're just gonna be there to say yes to whoever just walks into their life oh my gosh that's not true guys just because you're plus size doesn't mean you don't have standards for yourself and it doesn't mean that you have to say yes to every every kind of person that walks in your life you don't and just because someone is plus size don't think that they are desperate they are not yeah so that's one of the other <laughs> weird experiences i've had something else that i experience which was very uncomfortable is shopping for clothes oh my god guys do you know there's a time shopping for clothes was so anxiety inducing for me i just wouldn't and i would just wear the same clothes over and over and over and over and over and over again until they would get like torn and if i found something that was a good fit for me like I think I do that to date. Like if it's a pair of jeans and it fits me, it fits me perfectly, you're gonna see me with it like ten times before you stop seeing me with it. And now I'm saying ten times because um I try to like get more clothes, of which I do need more clothes even currently and shoes. But when I was a kid I would I would overdo it and also because like I I don't come from <laughs> from <laughs> and also because I don't come from a wealthy family or so it's not like i had the luxury of just buying clothes anyhow but i remember a specific time we went to gikomba it's it's a popular market here in kenya 
I was looking for jeans. I went with my mom and my sister. We were shopping for jeans. And we went to a stall and I was trying out everything, everything, everything. And the person who was selling these clothes, uh, or rather the people, because it was like a number of people in the same stall. So they, they, kept, kept, they kept giving me uh, pairs of jeans to try out. And with each and every one of that I tried, nothing would fit me. And they would just be like, you could hear the, the, the two whispers they're giving each other. They're like, uh, so what the one who was selling was selling the other one. Um, go and look for other ones and make sure they are big. Kwa sababu huyu ni mnono. And that, that statement in itself is not offensive. But it's just the way they kept laughing about it and giggling about it. Yeah, so something else I've experienced, guys, is people constantly comparing you to your mom. There's been a lot of times where I've been working with my, my mom and... You know, someone would meet us and be like, oh, that's... And then my mom introduces me as their kid and they're like, oh my God, Mnaka sisters. <laughs> Guys, not that it's bad. And I love that it's a compliment for her. But for me, at that time, I was very insecure in myself. And I had a lot of confidence issues or self-esteem issues or a lack of the two rather so for me i just remember the more we got those statements the more i was just looking at myself and i'm like oh gosh when you how do i look like am i that big like i even look older than my own mom i get them up to date honestly but right now i feel like i'm in a much different place and right now i just look at them and i'm happy for her like it's a compliment for her you know, I don't necessarily take it the way I used to take it when I was younger. So I think I'm going to do just this one color. <laughs> Guys, I feel so funny filming this. <laughs> because, like, I'm not, this is my first time I'm recording myself trying makeup. And I've been trying to learn for a minute. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for, not look, I've already found uh someone that i want to learn from and i'm gonna try booking a lesson with them to learn how to do my makeup and hopefully i can do that soon and then i'll tell you how it goes yeah so something else is being afraid to to sit on chairs in public you know i i feel like a lot of slimmer people walk through life confidently and they, they are just out here sitting on chairs however they like and jumping on chairs and running to chairs and just sitting on them however they want because they know it's just a chair and it's gonna hold me and it's gonna hold my body but let me tell you when you've grown up as a plus size kid especially when you have already broken a chair or two hey it's it's such an experience like wherever you are wherever it, I do that up to date like before I sit down I have to like assess the chair like i i'm giving it like as i die to be like mm, will it fit me like you know if there's an issue of it fitting you as in for me sometimes if if the handles are open my body spills out you know so i'm sitting on the chair yes but my body is spilling out to the side and another thing sometimes guys imagine i've been talking here for like five minutes uh my, my phone decided to just um go dark or go black i guess we are manifesting a camera amen amen all right so i was talking about uh chairs like i feel like even when i'm dating or when i used to date i would ask someone if they have dated a plus size person before because i don't want to be your test subject and i feel like there's things you would know if you've dated a plus size person before or rather if you were keen and attentive like just just a random example you wouldn't on the discussion of chairs like you wouldn't know that i would be conscious about how the chairs look like and how big or small they are and how sturdy they are if you've only been dating like um um smaller people in terms of weight like you wouldn't you wouldn't know that i don't want to sit on a plastic chair especially this the small plastic bar suits where i'm um, uh, bar stools where i'm sitting and my body is spilling out everywhere and maybe you would know that i would prefer some 
certain kind of chairs over others and you would plan ahead if we're having a date you would consciously plan ahead to be like mm, i think we should go here instead because they have better seating and they have maybe they have booths they have whatever 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 yeah so that's just one of those things that being growing up as a fat kid or rather a fat um adult has just given me i think about it consciously i really do and i don't i usually don't date people who have not been with other plus size people there's a lot of things i could tell you that if you're dating someone who is dating a plus size person for the first time you're gonna you're gonna have to constantly tell them about things and for me it just feels like i'm doing so much extra work that i don't want to do i mean it's awesome to communicate and you don't know what you don't know so the fact that someone doesn't know that some things would make you feel uh weird or bad it's not their fault because they don't know until they know and now it's up to them to do better you know so i just did my liner while the camera was off my phone camera and then i did a bit of it down here i'm wondering if i should do a wing <laughs> i always botch my wings maybe i can do a tiny one but i'm gonna do my lips first so i'm just doing gloss and that's about it so i don't know if i've already talked about this but there's friends who will keep you around so that they feel better about themselves and most especially friends who are let me not say straight because not every straight person is like this but friends who are obsessed with male validation oh my gosh you will be thrown under the bus so many times so many times just so this person can feel like they have a leg you know over you am they are more wanted than you and you know i feel like even though i have grown up as a queer person male validation is so ingrained in our heads that you know you grow up wanting those compliments even though you're not even attracted to that gender you're like when they give you compliments you're like oh okay awesome you know and that's something i have i've had to like unlearn and be sentiment completely for my life and you anyway, know i'm losing i'm losing <laughs> my point right now that's another talk going with my black one and i'm just gonna try and give my my lips a bit of a shadow so i saw this hack on tiktok so i'm gonna do a straight line here mm. yeah that's a straight line and it just gives me a bit of a shadow on my lower lip do you see it or am i being the lulu i think i think i'm okay i see it mm. and then I'm going to do the same up here. Just a bit. Just on the curve. I'm just lining the curve. And then I'm going to do it on the corners of my lip, my top lip. Uh, like that. Yeah, like that. Maybe I'll add a bit here because I don't feel like it's dark enough for me. Sometimes if I'm going for a gothic look, I do my black liner up to here. Up to here. I do a lot of it and then I smudge it again. But today I'm just going for a light thing. So that's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to do my gloss. So I learned this hack from my friend. Shout out to you, Nicole. If you want your liner to stay longer or rather if you want your gloss to stay longer you start with a solid base for me i'm gonna use uh, this vaseline is it gloss or whatever it is i'm gonna use this so i'll just line it first and then i'll go in with my gloss mm, it's a bit pink i love the color it just gives you more It gives you just a nice color but also sometimes i do i forgo this and i use a bit of concealer and then just use my lip gloss and it still gets the same effect so i just want a bit not a lot you can go as heavy on it or as light okay 
okay so now that's done and i'm gonna use my gloss mm. i'm using this one i really love the color it's so brown sometimes i just apply it without any liners or anything and it looks so good it looks so simple and so nice uh i'm gonna still use the same brush let me be fancy <laughs> uh, something else that i have experienced uh that i am still i still struggle with to do it sometimes uh let me just do this one yeah that's it that's that's my <laughs> that's my makeup for today i really like the lips i think it's my favorite thing about this look yeah so something else i really struggled with is eating in public when i'm alone you know like when you're a bigger person people always make comments when you're eating or rather like can i say it's rude people or just part for big people i'm not sure because you could be eating literally the same exact thing in the same amount size but they feel the need to tell you how wow you're eating that with maliza anyway so i'm gonna do a small line oh gosh <laughs> okay it's a small line and then i'm gonna connect it like the tiktok girl is so pray for me this works out this is I, I feel like learning how to do my liner is the hardest lesson so my phone keeps um cutting off I'm, I'm not sure why uh but <sighs> I, I i've said a few things but it's been just me talking and the video not recording so i feel bad about that but yeah that's basically my experiences growing up as a fat kid and now a fat adult but basically i feel like you just have to learn to love yourself yeah and loving yourself doesn't mean that you can't want to lose weight or that you want to have a certain body type for the rest of your life it's loving yourself no despite whatever you want you want to do or whatever goals you have around your body in, in for the purpose of this conversation so yeah just practice confidence because again confidence is not something you're born with and it's not something that you will have for the rest of your life if you don't practice it so for me that looks like wearing uh, my dresses that are showing off my legs and wearing tops that are showing off my arms because those are things that i've been really insecure about my entire life and my tummy and all that so just keep practicing confidence and something else keep people around you who are positive because when you keep people around you who are fat phobic that's actually a form of self-harm i really do believe that and it might be controversial but for me i don't keep fat phobic or homophobic people in my life because that's i view that as a form of self-harm why why do i want to keep these people around me i get that in some circumstances it's unavoidable maybe it's your parent or um just an unavoidable person if i can say that but when it comes to the friends you choose for yourself to keep in your life why why are you keeping people around you who are fat shaming you and people who are negatively talking to you i'm not saying that your friends shouldn't be able to tell you the truth even if it hurts you but they they have to say it with kindness and just don't let me not even finish that thought just don't keep people around you who are harmful to you uh so yeah thank you so much for watching this video uh the next one is gonna be dropping tomorrow so please make sure to subscribe so that you'll be notified as soon as i as i upload the video and make sure to share this channel with your friends and your family just share it wide so that you can get to a thousand subscribers that's current that's currently my goal right now to get a thousand subscribers and thank you so much for watching this and i really appreciate that make sure you like and Make sure you comment down below or if you're afraid of commenting down below just dm me and please follow me on instagram and tiktok as well because i also post content there and yeah i love you guys thank you for being here